Great. So there's been increasing attention in the past few years to the challenges in, uh, in digital practice of multilingual and digital practice. And it's been widely accepted that digital ecosystems have a language and geocultural diversity problem. A series of initiatives has attempted to address this imbalance in a variety of ways, whether driven by practice, so things like language diversity guidelines or multilingual toolkits or theory through biocultural diversity and translingual or transcultural critiques, to, to name two examples. And the digital humanities has also seen some welcome initi initiatives to embrace multilingual perspectives, some are listed here as well. But in general terms, languages and the plural and multilingualism still lack visibility in digital humanities debates, initiatives and scholarship. So in June last year, a group of us organized the Disrupting Digital Monolingualism Workshop to address what some have called language insensitivity or language indifference in digital studies and practice. And originally intended primarily as a face-to-face -face event due to COVID-19, this had to become a two-part online event, which aimed to do two things. Firstly, to showcase existing initiatives in this area, and secondly, to collect collectively propose new models and solutions. The first part of the event then was a showcasing through a, a, a series of lightning talks, demos, posters, a panel and a workshop, addressing everything from digital responses to uh, language endangerment and script displacement or digital homelands for diasporic languages to multilingualism as an instrument for fostering diversity in South Africa. You can see videos of most of these interventions in our YouTube channel listed in the URL below. But I want to focus most of my brief presentation today on the second part of the workshop where we brought together leading researchers, educators, digital practitioners, language focused professionals and policy makers to address the challenges of multilingualism digital spaces and to propose key areas of strategic development in multilingual digital theory and practice and we group this development around four areas so firstly around diversity and digital knowledge infrastructures secondly around multilingual methods and data thirdly around transcultural and translingual approaches and finally artificial intelligence machine learning and natural language processing in language worlds uh, worlds and we invited two facilitators per theme to organize responses to a series of starting questions for each theme over a one week period after the first part. Um, some groups decided to focus on, a, uh, just hold a one-off meeting. One of them organized daily prompts, which members responded to in a kind of writing sprint and another orga organized a public survey. But each theme group basically had complete liberty to take the discussion in whatever direction they deemed important for one week. Um, so one, one group reflected on the challenges and new possibilities digital media offer for studying translingual and transcultural dynamics. Another explored multilingual challenges in the use of multimodal corpora. Uh, the group on AI and NLP set participants a series of questions facing multilingual NLP, discussed its potential for humanities research and identified opportunities for future collaboration between scholars and industry professionals. For the researchers and the professionals on other academics. Requirement profile for multilingually enabled digital knowledge infrastructures. And their term requirement profile, which they created, refers to a set of minimal standards for multilinguality that platforms would support in order to be accessible to different users. And they were particularly interested in standards supporting non-Latin scripts. They plan to publish this minimum requirement list on Zenodo's uh, towards the multilingual DH community in the coming weeks or months. So in conclusion, the Disrupting Digital Monolingualism Workshop aimed to bring together a number of different dialogues, including those listed here. And our goal was not only to give testament to the sheer breadth of perspectives which need to come into play when exploring digital linguistic and cultural diversity, but also to forge new collaborations between diverse stakeholders. And the outbreak of COVID-19 has significantly delayed the outcomes from this workshop, but we do plan to publish a full report on the event soon. There's a preliminary one already there. And we hope well, this will be followed by other outcomes for the theme groups mentioned before. Uh, and our plan is to continue collaborating with other multilingual DH initiatives to overcome language indifference in digital studies or practice more widely, to increase the visibility of languages and multilingualism in the digital humanities, and to affect the co-design of conceptual frameworks, white papers, prototypes, and toolkits. Thank you for listening, and please do contact me if you're interested in knowing more or future collaborations on this topic going forward.